um, in the age of mass production, people are almost an extension of the machine, right? So, so you know, the machines do some things and there's people there to operate them. Whereas in the most advanced firms now, um, actually people and machines have very different roles. Machines can do everything that can be automated or routinized, but we rely on people for the one thing they, they can do that machines definitely can't do, which is to imagine stuff. So <coughs> the problem is, though, that unlike the era of mass production, which did spread to all parts of the economy and pretty much in all parts of the world, these advanced practices of innovation haven't spread. Um, instead, we see concentrations in a few places and among a few firms. People at the Sharp and Inverse Care Law who deserve to define knowledge and access and the institutions that, frankly, no matter how well-intentioned they are, are closed to those people, closed in very hard and fast ways. So much of um, government investment in research and innovation goes on creation of knowledge, like R&D, not on spreading it. And I think there's a huge amount we could do to think about how to give a much wider range of people access to these advanced production practices. The, a deliberate attempt to create or recreate what a library should be in a community depends on the collaboration of that community across public, private and not-for-profit in the interests of the users. But the algorithm, if anything, should work. It should give you more time with your doctor, not less. It should give you more of an experience of a relationship with your health, not less. But it sh that should be the same for everybody.